Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm going to be measuring and adjusting the front end ride height on my 03 Dodge Durango 4x4. This is something that you want to do prior to getting in alignment to make sure that your alignment is correct and that the camber and caster is properly set by the alignment shop. Some alignment shops won't check the ride height like they're supposed to, so it's a good idea to do it yourself. Make sure that the suspension hasn't sagged at all or anything like that. In my case, the suspension has actually sagged, so much so that the lower control arms are pretty much resting on the lower bump stops, which they shouldn't do. That puts excessive stress on the ball joints and could cause them to prematurely fail. So I'm going to adjust them today. It's actually really simple to do, just a couple measurements. All you need is a tape measure and a wrench, that's it. And maybe a calculator if you're bad at math. So this video does not apply to two-wheel drive Durangos and Dakotas. This is specific to four-wheel drive because the front end suspension components are completely different. The first thing you want to do is put your truck on a level surface. You don't need to raise the hood. I just happen to have mine open from working on some other stuff. You want it firmly on the ground with the suspension holding up the weight of the vehicle. You don't want it up on jack stands. You don't want it jacked up at all. You want it at its normal ride height. As I mentioned earlier, my truck is on level ground right now in my garage and yet the lower bump stop is pretty much straight up against the lower control arm. That shouldn't happen. There should be a nice air gap in between those two. Once you got it on a level surface, you want to bounce the suspension a little bit to let it settle. So now you want to take a measurement. While it's advisable to have the tire fully inflated, it really doesn't matter. This measurement works regardless of what size tire you have installed or rim or anything like that, mainly because it works off of center points and a, a delta or difference between those two points. So you want to take your tape measure and measure from the floor to the center of your center cap, right about there. In my case, it's about 14 and a quarter. So you take that measurement and you write it down. Underneath the truck and measure the distance from the ground to the center of the rear lower control arm bolt head, which should be the one on the, in on the inside. This is a little tough to do on camera, but you just measure it like that. In my case, it's about 10 and 5 8 inches. So now we do a little bit of math. The measurement between the ground and the center of the passenger side front wheel was 14 and a quarter inches. Then the measurement between the ground and the center of the rear pivot bolt at the rear of the lower control arm was 10 and 5 eighths inches, or 10.625. So to complete the measurement, you subtract the two, and you get 3.625 inches, or 3 and 5 eighths. Now the spec says that the delta between or difference between those two measurements should be 2.9 inches plus or minus 0.12 inches. So if we subtract 2.9, we get 0.725 inches. That means that my suspension is out on the passenger side 0.725 inches and I need to raise it up that much. Now I need to measure the driver's side. The procedure is exactly the same, so I'm not going to film it. I'll just come back with the results. Okay, so here are the measurements for the driver's side. I got between the ground and the center of the driver's front wheel 14.375 inches or 14 3 eighths. For the measurement between the ground and the center of the rear lower control arm bolt, I got 10 and 9 sixteenths, which is roughly 10.563 inches. You subtract the two and you get 3.812 inches. Then to find out how far out of spec it is, subtract 2.9 and you get 0.912 inches. This is why you want to measure both sides because you may get different values on either side of the truck. So now we know how far out of spec my suspension is. Now we need to adjust it, and for that we move on to the truck. We're over at the passenger side, torsion bar and torsion bar key, and it's adjuster bolt. So you want to turn this clockwise to raise the vehicle up, and counterclockwise to lower it back down. I've already put some penetrating oil on the bolt up here and down in here 
and inside to help loosen it up so it'll be easier to turn. This will take some force because you are literally lifting the entire truck up by this bolt. So you want to get a long breaker bar and a 5 16 or a 24 millimeter socket. Preferably a 6 point rather than a 12 point so you can get as much bite on the sides of this bolt head as possible. You don't want to strip this thing out. So make sure you have the proper sized socket and a long breaker bar. So another thing you want to do is take a sharpie or some other kind of paint pen and mark the bolt. So as you can see, I've already marked mine right here and this is pointing straight sideways so that I can keep track of how many times I've turned this thing around. When you set up your socket on your breaker bar, you want to try to make it so that it matches that line so it's going about the same direction. This will help you keep track of how many times you've turned the screw and adjusted the ride height. So when you're raising and lowering the vehicle, you never want to lower the vehicle to its final position. You always want to lower it past where it needs to go and then raise it up to its final destination. In our case, we're going to be raising it up to where we need it to be. If by chance we pass the mark that we want to get to, we lower it past the, that point again and then raise it back up to where we need it to be. This ensures that there's proper tension on this bolt and on this key right here to ensure it works properly. Each full turn of this bolt roughly equates to about an eighth of an inch of travel up or down depending on the direction you turn it. So you can use that as a general rule of thumb to get you in the ballpark. Once you're close to where you need to be, then you move to the other side and adjust it so that it's close to where it needs to be. Then you measure again. You want to do both sides at the same time because if you raise one side up, it's going to put more pressure on the other side and that's going to affect your measurement. You want it level whenever you're making your measurements. So you want to have them about the same height at almost all times. I'm going to adjust both sides and be right back. So while doing these measurements, the distance between the floor and the center of the wheel is not going to change. It's going to be the same no matter what you do. What's going to change is the distance between the ground and the rear bolt in the lower control arm. So to find out what measurement you want to shoot for, you just add this to this, so 10.563 or 10.625. And you get 11.475 and 11.35. So these are the two numbers that I'm going to shoot for to try to get the ride height to where I want it to be. So before you take your new measurements, you want to bounce the suspension up and down again. Like that. Okay, I've reached my mark. I have it at 11.38, which is about 11.375. I was shooting for 11.35, so it's close enough. As I stated earlier, you never want to loosen to your final position. You always want to tighten it to its final position. You don't need to loosen it very far, so in my case, all I need to do is loosen it about that much, about an eighth of a turn. If you notice previously it was pointing this way, now it's pointing here. And then put it back to where I want it to be. which in my case is straight across. Now I'm at my preferred ride height. You want to double check your measurement by bouncing the front of the truck up and down a few times and then re-measuring the distance between the ground and the rear bolt on the lower control arm. In my case, I'm at 11.375 and I was shooting for 11.35, so I'm within that .125 inch threshold, so I'm right where I want to be. You can see that there's now about a, a half inch to three quarters of an inch of clearance between the bump stop and the lower control arm. This will likely make my ride a lot smoother because it's not going to be bouncing against the bump stop as often. The shock absorbers will be allowed to do what they're supposed to do and the ball joints won't be taking the brunt of the hit. So one thing you want to make sure you do after making this adjustment is getting an alignment and making sure that your camber and caster are properly adjusted. Changing the ride height does affect your alignment so you need to make sure that it's back into spec. So that's pretty much it. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, please subscribe.